Welcome to Jazz at St. James on this day, April the 18th. And we celebrate the third Sunday of the season of Easter. The celebration of the resurrection of our Lord continues week after week after week through the spring season. Today, along with good jazz music, we hear from our reading how Jesus' new life affects our new life in Christ and what that looks like and what it has to do with something called purity we hear. I also want to thank you for your offerings that sustain the ministry here and we're doing something fun here at St. James during uh, this season so now until Mother's Day we're having this fundraiser so that we can send money to Lutheran World Relief so that they can get the vaccine to developing countries. There are about 100 countries in the world right now where not one shot has been given to one citizen in the arm with the vaccine. We can help with that. So thank you for considering a gift. Now, let's join together in our jazz liturgy today. Let us begin.
Let the incense of our repentant prayer ascend before you, O God, and let your loving kindness descend upon us that with purified hearts we may sing your praise with the church on earth and the whole heavenly host and may glorify you forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of John, the third chapter, from the Message Translation. Hear the text. What wondrous love the Father has extended to us. Just look at it. We are called children of God. That's who we really are. But that's also why the world doesn't recognize us or take us seriously because it has no idea who he is or what he's up to. But friends, that's exactly who we are, children of God. And that's only the beginning. Who knows how we'll end up? What we know is that when Christ is openly revealed, we'll see him, and in seeing him, become like him. All of us who look forward to his coming stay ready with the glistening purity of Jesus' life as a model for our own. All who indulge in a sinful life are dangerously lawless, for sin is a major disruption of God's order. Surely you know that Christ showed up in order to get rid of sin. There is no sin in him, and sin is not a part of his program. No one who lives deeply in Christ makes a practice of sin. None of those who do practice sin have taken a good look at Christ. They've got him all backward. So, my dear children, don't let anyone divert you from the truth. Here ends a reading of our text today. Our Easter celebration, Easter season celebration here at St. James is punctuated by three baptisms. Uh, last week we celebrated the baptism of Little Brooks at the baptismal font right behind me. Then next week we'll celebrate the baptism of Little Willow. And on Mother's Day we'll celebrate the baptism of one-year-old Henry, all brought to the font. It will be a, a celebration of new life. It'll be all about Easter. And as our lesson said from 1 John today, we, along with them in baptism, become children of God. We become part of God's family. And then we are told something else. We are told that we will become like Christ. Wait a minute. You and I are going to become like Christ. Those of us here tonight, today, and those of you who are listening home, all of us are going to become like Christ. Well, your question might be the same as mine. So how exactly is that going to happen? How are we going to become like Christ? Or, to make it even tougher, the older translation uses the word purity. We are going to become pure like Christ. I don't know about you, but I would think that would be difficult work when it comes to me. How is somebody going to make me pure? Confession or a sacrifice or go live in a cave somewhere? How do we do that? A year ago, uh, 
Actually, a little over a year ago, I was talking to a rabbi friend of mine, and he was telling me that David, oftentimes he gets a call, several times a year actually, from churches and students at, in Sunday schools and confirmation and youth group, and they want to come by and hear about Judaism and, and uh, tour their synagogue. And so he always says yes. And he invites the group over and he shows them the synagogue and he shows them the memorial wall and he shows them the eternal light and he brings them into the worship area and he shows them the, the scroll, the Torah, the sacred writings. And he said, David, at the end, all the groups say the same thing. All these groups are Christian. They always ask, well, Rabbi, thank you so much for showing us this, the, the synagogue, but where is it that you kill all the animals for the sacrifice? Downstairs somewhere that you haven't showed us? And then he has to inform all these ignorant Christians like us that Actually, the Jews haven't been sacrificing animals since about the year 70 or about 2,000 years ago after the destruction of the temple. I mentioned sacrifice since that was usually how ancient religious people became acceptable to God. They would take a dove or a cow and kill it and place it on a burnt offering. And, and it, we're told in Psalms that the, the, the smoke, the aroma would go up to heaven and somehow God would smell it and be satisfied. And then the people would become pure. So how is that going to work today? How do we become pure today? How are we made right with God? The biblical text gives the answer this way. Listen. And all who have their hope in Christ purify themselves just as Christ is pure. Hope. Hope. In what is to come. Hope in a vision of an Easter God who makes us new and turns what we see into believing what we do not see. It's a, a movement from death to life. That hope, that belief, that trust is that God uses us to become pure as Christ is pure. It is the same life, but somehow we see life in a different way. We walk an Easter path, not so much with our feet first, but rather with our eyes, with our belief, with our trust, with our attitude first, and then our feet follow. In the 1930s, Dorothy Fields wrote the lyrics to a jazz tune composed probably by Fats Waller. Soon, everyone was singing it or playing it, everybody from... Louis Armstrong to Ella Fitzgerald to Nat King Cole and Willie Nelson. The song was popular in part due to how it invited us to see life in a different way. All we had to do was, as the title indicates, walk on the sunny side of the street. Do you remember the lyrics? Let me read a couple. Grab your coat, don't forget your hat, but leave your worries, leave them on the doorstep. Just direct your feet to the sunny side of the street, to the sunny side of the street. This Easter season isn't just about what happened at an empty tomb some 2,000 years ago in Jerusalem. Instead, it's about hope a vision we have of staring troubled reality right in the eye. And yet, with those same eyes, being able to see new life in Christ. And that new life? Well, with those eyes, we begin to see our neighbor as a gift. We begin to see our money and possessions through the prism of sharing, to see sexual and racial and national diversity as a delight 
Isn't that great? People are different. Seeing the road ahead, but choosing, but choosing to walk on the sunny side of life. I know it all sounds terribly crazy, but so did Holy Week when God took a Good Friday death and pulled from it the life of Easter. That's what Easter hope is about, and that's how we live. Mike, let's hear our tune.
fun to have John with us tonight. Wow, what a sound. Thank you again for celebrating jazz and jazz vespers here at St. James. A warm welcome again to all of you. In addition to worshiping online, as you're doing right now, you can join us in person for worship every Sunday morning at 9.30 for a service of the Eucharist. And we do so following all the safety protocols from the governor wearing masks and sitting distantly from one another, but enjoying the Eucharist together. Mike, will you introduce the band tonight? I would love to. Once again, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we cherish this time of getting together each month. Uh, we all look forward to um, just performing together, but knowing that you're kind of out there in the uh, ether, but we look forward to seeing you here in the pews at the, when it's safe. So we want to thank very much Mr. John Moak on trombone, our very and uh, behind him on drums, Mr. Brent Fallis. Thank you, Brent. And over there on the bass, Mr. Laurent Nickel. Thank you, Laurent. And on my right, Valerie Brown on vocals. Thank you, Valerie. Carson, I want to thank you for the video. Jeff, I want to thank you for the audio. And uh, if, once again, John, it's a pleasure. Um, and you can listen to John and guitarist Christopher Waitok. It's every Thursday. Um, on Facebook, it's a live feed, live stream. What yeah. time do you start that up? 5 o'clock, and it's on Christopher Wojtek's page. On Christopher Wojtek's Facebook page at 5 o'clock, every Thursday for the last year, you have been, you have been <laughs> playing together uh, six feet apart in Christopher's living room, and it's a joy to listen to hear him play. So thank you, Pastor. And Mike, all of this wouldn't be possible without you, Mike Horsfall. Let's right. thank Mike. <laughs> Let's uh, bow our heads for a word of prayer. Resurrected Christ, during the season of Easter, you shower us with hope. Sometimes we are desperate for hope and encouragement when life is uncertain. Walk with us on the road to new life each day and give us eyes to travel on the sunny side of the street. We pray today for those who deal with this pandemic, even, even as there are signs that things are getting better. We ask that you would give hope to medical professionals and first responders who are on the front lines of this pandemic throughout the world. And use us to encourage Asian Americans and African Americans who are all touched by hateful acts of discrimination in our society. Sustain war-torn countries and communities, especially we think of Ethiopia and Yemen and Syria. And use us at St. James to help to bring the life-saving vaccine to those developing countries throughout the world. And Lord, in this Easter season, you birth joy out of sorrow. Give us all a sense of connectedness. Give us eyes to see those who live on our streets and those who are on our borders. Help us see them as part of our family your family, and for all who are in need this day of hope and healing, we raise our prayers to you, and we do so in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. Now let's sing together the prayer our Lord taught us. Sweet for 
receive the blessing. Now go out into the world in peace, have courage, hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the suffering, honor all people, loving and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit will be with us all. Amen.
Great play fun. Nice, nice seeing you again and playing with you again, John. Oh, yes. Everything spelled good. Everything sounded good. Valerie.